Hello and welcome to Raheen Space. It's me, Raheen Fatima. And today we have a great guest, Andrea. She has been doing a lot in consciousness. And I think, so it's a real coincidence that we are wearing almost the same thing. And I was gonna sit on a couch that's almost the color that she is sitting on. So, you know, you know, it's just like a universal coincidence or something. So I think without further ado, let's get to our special guest. So hello, how are you, ma'am? Beautiful, thank you, Raheen. I am well, thank you. And um, in the work that we do, we use this concept of synchronicity and it's one of our operating system values, which is when things kind of happen that are connected that shouldn't be. And I think that's what's happened with us matching today. I think synchronicity is showing up. So it's a good sign for our interview, Raheen. <laughs> it is. And I think uh, what I believe is that every human being is spiritually connected, whether they know it or not. Like I have other like 7 billion people on the earth, like nearly eight. So I have that many people on the earth, but I know that I am spiritually connected to all of them. Although I know very less of them, but I think that we are connected in one way or you know the other. So can you please introduce yourself for our audience? Thank you. I love what you just shared. I'll come back to it. But um, So my name is Andrea. I also get called Tan. Um, I am English. I was born in England and I'm there right now in lockdown, living in my, my parents' house in my old bedroom. I didn't expect to be staying here, but it's where I was when lockdown happened. I tend to travel. I've been traveling for the last eight years with the work that I do. So I've lived all over the world in Mexico and the US and France and many, many places uh, working in different cultures to explore uh, the design of new systems for something we call co-creation. So uh, not a lot of people know what co-creation is, and I guess we'll talk about that a lot more. Uh, but I am kind of a co-creation specialist, I guess. I'm a, um, a systems designer and um, a researcher and a specialist in how people are organized through co-creation. So I guess that sums up what I do. I guess you'll be asking give me where he what that all means <laughs> yeah so tell the audience what's co-creation that's like the first question that I, I i can think of after this yeah it's a really good question because i've spent the last month now researching this word co-creation because we have been using it for seven or eight years in our work and there are many people all over the world that use the term creation. but when you actually do the research Lots of people are using it in many different ways. And so what I'm going to do is share with you my definition of co-creation. So for me, and I think very generally, everybody's in agreement that co-creating is simply this idea that we're all creating together or one or more people creating together, we are co-creating. That's the very essence of it. And it means different things, like I said, in different contexts, like in business, it means that businesses are, are creating with their customers. For me, um, I think what we are doing is something very specific called synergistic co-creation. And this is looking at how the whole universe is creating together. <laughs> so that can include, as you started, creating with spirit. Some of us feel very connected to a spiritual dimension or what people might call God, and we are creating with that part of ourselves. Many of us now, this is becoming so much more important understand that we are creating with nature we are creating with the whole planet and if we don't look to how we are creating with nature we're hurting nature so that's another aspect of co-creation creating with nature we are creating with our bodies right yeah. <laughs> like i can't my body's made up of lots of cells and organs and i can pretend that i can do what i want but actually they're creating with me so co-creation for me and synergistic co-creation is looking at how we can create with everything and other things and take into account the impact we have and how can we create in a way that's a win for all life and not just me <laughs> so that's the paradigm i think that we have been in you know the world that we've lived in is is kind of what i call the um it's kind of like 
I'm every person's an island yeah the separation world like I just look after me as long as I do well in the world that's good you Raheem you go off and you do what's good in the world and then everything will be okay but it's not if we don't take into account how we're affecting others it's not so we want to create worlds where when I create you win I win Raheem the animals win the ocean wins <laughs> and God wins and the planet wins it's a win for all I hope that gives you a little bit of an insight. <laughs> yes, it does. And I think co-creation, especially in this COVID-19 situation, is really important because uh, bringing us out of this situation is the, the co-creation. That is a one and only thing. Not even vaccinations and everything can bring, a, bring us out of it. Only co-creation can because, you know, there's a lot of minds, a lot of, you know, genius, intelligent minds put together and it will create um, some solutions for the COVID-19 or some preventive, you know, more preventive ways like vaccines or something. So I think that's how it's all going to work. And that's how the world has been working for the past. I have no idea how many years, you know, how many thousand or, you know. Okay, so when I think of it, it's just like, I am so new. But a lot and a lot of years ago. So I think that's how things have been happening because we have big brands like Louis Vuitton and we have a lot of things working right now. You know, even these racism varying, I'm sure that at least there were two people who started the brand in the first place. And then, you know, the things went on and on. So I think we fail to understand sometimes the co creation is why we are still here why we are in the first place right and is also why we are you know a lot of you know basic things that we feel like you know ac because i was born in 2007 so it's for me it's like you know you know the air conditioner it's supposed to be there in my room it's supposed to be there but for many people it wasn't there they co-created made it for me well, this is the thing, Raheem, that if we look at life, it's always co-creating. Life, but from the beginning, we've been co-creating. We've all been together in this. All of life has been together in this experience we call planet Earth. So inevitably, we've been creating together from the beginning. Unfortunately, some of us are, how can I put this? Some aspects of the human race haven't felt it important to look at how they are creating with life and others and they've only looked after themselves or they've competed in that co-creative context. So we used to work with this lady, you may have heard of her called Barbara Marx Hubbard. And she was very well known in, she ran for vice president actually in America. She was one of the, I think she was the first woman to um, run for vice president. And she talked a lot about co-creation really from this lens of co-creating with the universe and spirit and the spirit of evolution. Um, but what, she was saying is we're now at a time where we need to learn to understand how to look at what's working and gather people together and everybody focus on what's working and come together and create together and create in service to life so i think that the shift that we need to make as a species is from just co-creating and not caring about how we're creating with others but learning how to create with others in a way that everybody is successful and taken care of and like i said not just people <laughs> not that we're just working together and people are winning but nature is winning and also our own bodies we haven't created very well with our bodies i don't think like you mentioned coronavirus yeah if we were really well and we really took responsibility for connecting to our bodies and the cells and instead of waiting for doctors to tell us how to take care of ourselves from the beginning we knew how to look after our energy and our body and if we did that we'd probably be much stronger human beings and we could f fight coronavirus way more successfully. But we, d we, don't, we don't really work, I don't, I'll speak for myself, <laughs> but lots of us lead, lead very, very busy lives and we eat food to keep us busy and going and meeting deadlines and all this kind of chaotic world that we live in. We, we, we lead a very unhealthy life, many of us, not everybody. So even learning to create better with our bodies, we would have been in a much better position to, to be strong and fight coronavirus if we created with our bodies better. 
Exactly. And I think uh, coronavirus has really helped with co-creation. And I thank the virus for that, for doing that for us, because we needed more co-creation in the world, that I must say. Because <laughs> at first, the coronavirus was, you know, a racist thing, you know, somebody who was, uh, at first, somebody who was like an Asian, Chinese looking person would often be, you know, frown frowned upon. But then, you know, it started growing. And then I'm kind of, I am happy that all sorts of people when got affected, we are one. Because I could have Corona, you could have Corona. I can have no Chinese saying to me, well, no, you have Corona as well. So we are not the only people having Corona. So I think that's how, you know, co-creation, because we were one and we knew that, you know, there's no black, white, Chinese, there's no Indian, there's nobody, there's the world. I don't know why we don't understand this, because we know there's Germany, we know there's France, but we have no idea that at the end of the day, we have governments, yes, but we are one, we are one, because you know, talking from a, a humanitarian perspective, we are, you know, colors and, you know, there's different types of hair, there are different types of eyes and different colors of the skin. All this was just created for identity. As in just, if I spot you, I could see, yeah, yeah, you might be from America, England, or maybe, you know, some French. That's how you kind of look. You could say I was Indian, you could say I was from Bangladesh or Pakistan. There's just three countries that you that would come to your mind because of how I look. But I don't think so. We should, you know, just let it get to our head. It, it's so inspiring talking like this person and to grasp this concept of oneness. I mean, spiritual people have talked about it for eons, you know. <laughs> They've understood the oneness of life and how everything is like we are saying here interconnected and what's starting to happen right now is i think humanity the earth is talking to humanity in many different ways it's saying look if there's a, a fire over here in the amazon there's a time we might have said that's not, it's okay it's over in the amazon that's not affecting me i live in england what's it's not my business but now we know that when the trees burn down it affects our atmosphere so it is my business what happens in the Amazon. When trees get destroyed in another part of the world, it affects me. And the same like you're saying, with a virus. We can't pretend a virus can stay in China. We can't put a little wall around the virus and say it's got nothing to do with me. The virus, because chemistry is everywhere. <laughs> Cells, the things that we can't see are everywhere. And we might think that we're separate, but we're not. It's traveling in a different layer of reality that we can't see. So all these things that keep happening are showing us more and more you are one <laughs> you can't separate with these weird nation states like you're separate and you live in separate boxes so i love to hear you reflecting about that for a young person to understand that concept of oneness and that's really what co-creation obviously is connected to as you are so beautifully describing it <laughs> yeah and well, what, one other thing that i really feel is important to tell is that I think what Corona else has taught us, there's a lot of things, but if you'd see in co-creation perspective, is that Corona has great chemistry with other Corona germs or cells, or whatever they are, because it was so great. It was just a city. It was just a seafood market. It was just one guy who got it. But see the chemistry between all those cells, the corona cells, they're like one person to the other, other than the entire city and then the state and then the China and then the world. And it's sad, then the entire world, because the chemistry of corona really, really, you know, they're bonded together. And the same is with other diseases, like cancer is one of the most powerful and deadly diseases. I, I, I have a family member who has it. I have my little brother who has it. But see how, you know, rapidly it, you know, grows. Because, you know, you know, those friends, they don't, you know, they're like, we need to grow, man. And they just grow in numbers. They grow in sizes. And also the cells of her body, you know, 
It's like, you know, one cell and then the daughter cell and then two divide it's cell division. I, I learned it in science class. So, you know, two cells divide and that's just how humans, because at first there was just one and then two people in the earth. And that's how seven, I think 7.5 billion people came into the earth. And we think that the earth is ours, but the earth is a place that's given to us by God. So we need to be grateful for it. Hmm. Well, the other thing that all these illnesses are telling us, Raheen, and I send love to your family. I've had a cancer um, issue in the past and I healed it in a very particular fashion. And what, what that taught me is that there's another area of co-creation that is is super important it's the relationship between the mind the body and the spirit <laughs> and understanding how when we create with spirit intelligence and also when we align our bodies and our feelings with who we are that can create health so what these illnesses show us is that we're not yet understanding how to even create like i said at the beginning with our bodies <laughs> so that they are strong and resilient and cancer is, is such a challenge for this planet. I've worked with a lot of specialists in this area and it, it's such a challenge. But it, if we get deep into cancer, the cancer is reflecting, again, some of this separation we have in ourselves. So cancer is a great messenger. I'm sorry, I, I, do, I feel that I send so much love and prayers to your family. It, it's a real challenge, but cancer can teach us um, where we're not creating with ourselves <laughs> and our spirit. Um, and it's hard to explain that. I won't go too deep into that in this call, but cancer is an example of it. And coronavirus, again, has shown us where we, we maybe don't, there's many things we don't understand. The interaction between climate and illness. I mean, there's been a lot of, maybe there's people being on your show talking about 5G, but the interaction between technology and climate, how that affects our body. So again, how is our body creating with technology and how is it creating with the climate what are the relationships how does that make us sick and human beings generally Raheen aren't very relational <laughs> and I don't and I mean it's lovely you're a young woman but I did um, women's studies when I was at university and we used to look at women's thinking and women and I don't want to say it's just women all men can do this because it's not about men and women being so different but women generally can think very relationally and our culture and our systems are not designed to look at relationships. <laughs> like what's the relationship between technology being used in this way, a climate issue and sickness? <laughs> There's many relationships we can explore. How are these things creating together? So I think that we are with a paradigm of co-creation also beginning to really start to think about how things are connected and related that in the past we maybe didn't think were related and connected. And I don't think. And what I feel like is that sometimes we see like something is like bizarre, something is like not related. But what I feel like is that every human being in the world is spiritually connected and could also be connected as in, you know, maybe their, um, you know, relatives or their, they know each other, their, you know, Facebook friends these days. Or, and I think everything in this world everything in existence is interrelated when it comes to planets or people on the planet or anything and then there's some relations that we might see as you know the relation of the planets but there's some relations that we might not see as uh, the the technology and uh, and also the climate change and you know the relation between climate change or and the Amazon fires. So there's a lot of things that we fail to see, but again, we need to dig deeper into what our surroundings because we can't just sit in, in an apartment with a laptop and you know all that tech savvy things and you know we can't just pretend that there are no there's no nature. Because again, you know, every Sunday I try to because I live very near to the mountain. So I just, you know, I just go on a nature walk and I, I just see, you know, how beautiful everything is. And it just calms me inside. This is a beautiful thing about nature. Um, I also have that connection with nature when I'm not 
in the countryside, I get very, my stress levels go up <laughs> because I also think when we're stood on a mountain, we can see the whole, we can see the whole picture and we're reminded of that, you know, the connection again. And when you were talking about, you know, the spiritual connection that we all have, I think that's the ultimate separation we've had, Raheem. As a culture, we don't, uh, and I keep using this we, because, and it's not fair, because many people are spiritually connected, but there's a huge portion of humanity that is not spiritual, spiritually connected. And they think that it might be a, a fantasy, you know, that I can be connected to you and know this morning that we might wear white shirts. <laughs> We might wear, might wear, and I have, I have a creator. We're both psychic. I have psychic abilities, and when you're psychic, you actually know for sure that our inner world is connected. It's not a, it's not to somebody who's not psychic. I could be making that up, and to somebody who's not psychic, they don't understand. Maybe that actually, if I know that my friend Devara over in Cairo, and I can go, she's wearing blue today. <laughs> I know that I can see her. I know for a fact that I'm connected to Devara. I don't need a telephone or the internet. <laughs> I'm actually connected. And as a psychic, psych I think as people who are psychic and spiritually connected do know that, Raheem. We know that everything is connected. There's another layer of experience that humanity doesn't necessarily understand that connects our life. And I'm deeply connected to that. And Barbara, who I talked about, believed that when we reconnect with that, humanity will evolve for the better. So... I love hearing you talk. I would like to interview you, I think, sometime. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm always open to interviews. But yeah, mm -hmm. I think that ability is really there because, you know, sometimes me and my friend try thinking the same number and it's always the same number. So maybe this happens really like, because sometimes we might not see and we might think, you know, it's, telepathic or there, there's some, you know, other sci-fi word for it. But I think we need to understand that it's all interrelation because we all are one, because we all, you know, are co-creating in a way. And I think co collaborations can always, always save the world, whether that be, you know, global warming or climate change or a lot of things. And I think so if you see in the SDG perspective, I see that, you know, there's the last one. That's like the 17th SDG. That's like partnerships. And I'm like, why? <laughs> sometimes I question it, but sometimes I'm like, well, actually they're right because they put the best to the last. Because without, yeah. because without that 17th goal, there's no purpose of the, you know, the other 16 ones because you cannot conquer, like overcome um, poverty or hunger or any other issue without co-creation. That's something that should be in your mind when you're trying to solve those problems that you need somebody. And some people might try to do all the work by themselves, but at the end of the day, they might think they're doing all of the work themselves but there's always some assistant that they hire that i must tell you <laughs> well again we are totally resonant raheem because i have spent quite some time the last years trying to explain why the sdgs i don't think can reach their potential because of the underlying thinking behind them so i have been saying that only when we have relational technology <laughs> Only when we have technology that can show us this group over here in Africa is solving an SDG and this group over here is working on a related SDG. How can we connect them so they can bring their minds together and see the greater whole? And the SDG technology isn't sophisticated enough. As far as I'm aware, I've, I don't, I've done research in this area to, to show us where those relationships are. And I believe that when we do support us, different groups working on SDGs to work in that more relational synergistic fashion, we will see much more progress. There's a lot more to it too, but I, I agree with you. I'd have partnerships as the foundation to the SDGs. Yeah, <laughs> I, but but that, that SDGs is just, you know, uh, a cool poster with a lot of colors and yeah, cool logos. That's all it is. If there is no other SDG 17, 
That's all it is. And I think the, the problem why there is no relatable technology is that there's a lot of people, especially in Pakistan. Pakistan, I could name a lot of people who are working on the SDGs and are, are doing amazing work, but they don't even know what are the SDGs. You know, that and be fire that they know they're working on them. Because I know this very amazing woman, she's in Robert Bindi, and then she, what she's doing, she's a makeup artist. And she gives free trainings to other girls for makeup so that they could have a salon at home and could earn money. That's decent work. And it's going to mm -hmm. boost up our economy. And also because there's only men working sometimes. But when women are working at their homes, of course the family's earning more and spending more, buying something from our country. That's our economy, our GDP. So I think that's something that she's great at doing. And she likes doing it. She gives it for free. She's like, some people who cannot afford it, but they still should know, you know, how this could change their lives and how they could earn at home. So I think there's a lot of incredible jobs that people are doing around the world, but they just don't know, you know, the value of the work they're doing. I absolutely agree with you, 100%. I, I should maybe use this as an opportunity to talk to you about some of the, the technology work that we are doing right now. So. Um, we have been thinking about, I mean, I, I, like you said, we have this beautiful idea of the SDGs, these amazing goals that can help human beings sort their stuff out. And if I mentioned it to my mum or my sister, they'd probably go, eh, what's an SDG? <laughs> like, and how do, we, how do we really understand who's, like I said earlier, who's already solving problems in that area? Who can say, hey, I've solved that problem. Let me give that solution to you a bit like your friend who has an idea and is helping others. Let me help others in another part of the world with the thing that I did. And maybe you have something that can help me. So what we are creating, um, I'm part of this bigger group called Together. So I have my own organization and then that's part of a big group called Together. All about co-creation, obviously, because we're together in it. <laughs> and we are creating a technology that will solve lots of these problems, but the first one will allow people to firstly create a profile for themselves and then start connecting with others who can maybe help them who, or who have, has a shared passion. Because what we're going to be inviting them to do is saying, how can you co-create? How can you help each other? And then what we'll do, Raheen, is we'll invite them to, to say, are you connected to an SDG? <laughs> You've never heard of it. We'll call it something else. I'm sure they'll be like, what's an SDG? But are you, are you doing something that's helping to clean the water? And they'll tag it. And we'll start to see how many ordinary people are involved in this. And we can start connecting people more and more and showing how humanity all together is working on those SDGs. And then we can be inspired on how we're helping each other. So that's just one aspect of the technology we're doing. We're doing much more, but we're hoping to bring in the SDG thinking and make it more accessible and fun and also inspiring you know so it's not just people in boardrooms I don't mean to be um what's the word um disrespectful to the people who are working on the SDGs I think they have really good intentions but I do think we need to bring it forth in a way that everyday people can relate to even including young people and children <laughs> they're the future you know <laughs> they're not going to be <laughs> It's no good speaking to like people in a boardroom in an office. We need to connect with young people. So that's a little bit about how we hope to make the SDGs a little bit more fun and accessible and used. But I, I totally agree. Yeah. So because I am the, I'm actually the SDG ambassador for kids here for the uh, SDG Academy of Pakistan. So I realized that, yes, we do have meetings, but thanks to Sarah Mar Jaffrey, who's a great person, is always, you know, working on the SDGs and the betterment of the, uh, of, you know, Pakistan and also the world. And what he did is that we were supposed to have an SDG hackathon. And it was supposed to be, you know, it was supposed to be in person, people from, you know, Switzerland, a lot of people were coming. But there are some people who just came and got stuck here eventually. But we did it online. And it was so interesting. It never ended. It yes. never ended. 
because we were doing a session every day as soon as that you know even now i know it as soon as i open um my facebook again he'd be live again with another sdg session or something and he's involving the youth see for some maybe to a lot of people it may sound bizarre that he gave a 12 year old young lady who was interested in the sdgs had a startup which was solving a lot of sdgs gave a chance made her the ambassador in almost i think 20 minutes we met we are, were in a meeting and i was the ambassador the next thing I knew, I was the ambassador. And um, yeah, that's how the rapidly the things went for me. Because I think that we need to see that how partnerships can change our lives. Because I have partnered with a lot of companies, but I see that there's nothing like local partnership. Hey, again, I, I mean, I can see why he selected you immediately as an ambassador, <laughs> um, for sure. And I actually think young people can do a lot more than we, I mean, I was going to say than we think, but actually it, it's not that. I think that young people bring forth fresh thinking and they have insights that we don't have. So I, I love it when, when people like you, I have another, an, another few Young people I know do amazing stuff like you, and I'm always so excited to see it. So I can see why that happened. And um, yeah, the the local stuff is absolutely where things are alive. Yeah, because we're connected as human beings. Like when we're we're locally together, we have, we have a shared culture, and we can be connected in person. So supporting people to work locally and still remain connected globally is is local thing yeah i think that that's also so important so i love hearing that you're all doing that out there like that's amazing that's so exciting i would love to learn more <laughs> yeah and so now because i know that we could go on for hours and i can guarantee that to the audience as well but now i must say is that our session is coming to an end but of course we will come again and i would love to have another session with you but so that we have this one hour good session that we could talk as much as possible thank you so much for watching everybody today because we're doing on zoom after a very long time so i have no comments that i could read here i'm so sorry it wasn't working but i must say it was really really wonderful talking to you it was it was finally that i find somebody who was as passionate about co-creation as i am well, likewise, <laughs> for sure. I also am so excited to meet somebody so passionate too, and just to hear your wisdom. Really awesome. I've loved me and you. I'd love to talk again. Thank you. Thank you for my wisdom. <laughs> you made me confident here, a lot more confident because I am wise, people. So, and with this. I would love, uh, I would love to have her again, and you would see her again probably. So thank you so much for watching. And here I'm ending the session, but we'll be back.